Hello, this is Diane Dalton. This lesson will cover Windows 7 User Account Control. Windows 7 is a single user operating system, but you may have multiple people who use the same computer at any diff different time. You would be wise to create a separate user account for each person who uses that computer. That way each user has their own folders and files and they can each personalize their desktop. That also prevents people from seeing each other's files or folders or doing damage in that folder area. To create a user account, first of all, you must have the administrator rights to create a new user. Um, typically, the first person who registers the computer is the administrator by default. So on the control panel, click in the user accounts and family safety group on the control panel. From there, you will see a link that says add or remove user accounts. So click there. Um, you'll see several options then in the following screen, including create new user. Um, note below that there's also something called set up parental controls. We'll come back to that later. There's two different types of users. Um, a standard user is someone that can use the computer, can run the software, but you can't change any other user's files. You also can't change any of the security settings whereas the administrator has complete access to the computer. They can make changes that affect the other users, the standard users, and again, that first user is by default um, an administrator. So to create the new account, um, you've clicked on create an account. You have to give it a name. You have to select which type. You can see the two choices, standard user or administrator. Click the create an account, and then you see that the new account has been created. Now to personalize it a bit, you can select a different icon for each user from the gallery of choices that comes with Windows 7, or you could of course browse and pick your own image. Um, a administrative person can manage anybody else's account. Um, if you're a standard user, you may only change your own pictures. Now, as I said, you can set up parental controls. There was a link shown on a previous slide. This is for computers that are used by children. Um, there's things that, on the internet that are available that we don't want children to see. Um, there's different ways you can set it. You can set it um, with time limits, so they're only allowed to use the computer at certain times of the day. You can also um, set up game restrictions. You can set these restrictions either by the content or the title, and games are given um, content ratings. Then you can also allow or block specific software programs. So when you've clicked on the Set Up Parental Controls link, this is the screen you get on the left is the first one. shows you the different things you can do. You can set time limits, games, or allow or block certain things. This is what user account it's working with. And you need to, first of all, enable parental controls to turn them on. Now this is the time blocking. So you can set it up where it's blue, it's blocked. So this one is set to be blocked overnight from 8 p.m. until 7 a.m. every day. You can also set the game controls. Do you want to set the limits for games? And then the games, this is the list of games that are available, whether they're allowed to play or not. You can set to always block, um, always allow, or to use the um, rating. Now, the rating system, it's called the Entertainment Software Rating Board System. It's similar to what we see with the Movie Association. Um, here's some of the ratings. C is for early childhood. There's E for everyone, or there's an E10 for a little bit older. Teen, mature, and we don't even want to discuss the other ones. Now, speaking of teens, um, you might need to use disk space quotas. Um, if it's a family shared computer, um, I shouldn't just blame teens, but some people have a tendency to hog disk space. So you can set limits on how much any one person or any one user account may consume of the disk space. So you can get to this disk's properties by right clicking on the disk and selecting properties. And this shows you your full disk capacity and the pink area is what's still available. To set quotas, you go to the Quota tab. So when you're on the Quota tab, you need to click Show Quota Settings. 
Now in the quota settings, this is for the C drive. You need to enable the quota management first of all. You need to, in this group, select the default quota limit for new users on this volume. So this will be set up for every new user that's created. You can select the amount of the limit. In this case, I selected 10 gigabytes. And then you need to set a warning level so that when the user reaches that quantity of space, they will receive a warning that they're about to run out of their space. So that's for new users, each new user. But if you need to adjust it for an existing user, you need to click the quota entries. And this is a few steps. Um, so you would need to add a quota. You go to Quota, New. You need to select the name of a user that's on this computer. In this case, I use the NOS 130 student name. Then you hit Check Name to make sure you have correctly typed in a valid user name. It gives you uh, an option to add your new quota entry. Uh, and I put these settings the same as what I've set for a default new user. And you click OK. And then it shows in the list. Right now the status is OK. This person is not using too much. The account name. And at this point, this person's not using any disk space. All right. So if you've had multiple users on your computer and you find that someone is no longer, or you no longer want them to have access to the computer, a good safe advice is to remove their user ID. Again, from the control panel, the Add or Remove Users account link gives you the link, the option to remove that user's data. Um, it's a piece of advice, you may feel like you need to back up their user files before you remove their user ID. Um, Windows also comes by default with a guest account. It is by default unactivated, and I um, encourage you just to leave this disabled. Um, it's well known that there is a guest account, so it could be a security hole if someone were to able to try and log into your computer using that guest account. So good advice is just to keep that disabled unless you had a really good need, need to use it. Now, setting up file and folder permissions. This is what allows other people to look in your files. Um, the Windows NTFS file system allows each folder to have its own set of permissions. You can get this through the access control list. Um, the different ways of setting permissions is to allow full control, the ability to modify, to read and execute, to list just the folder contents, or to read or to write. So these are six different ways you can give control. Clearly somebody with full control can do all of these. Um, read and execute means someone could be able to browse through the file and they could execute a program that's there. Um, Now, a piece of user account guidance. Um, on your own personal computer, even if you are the only person that's going to be using this computer, I highly recommend that you create two accounts, one as an administrator and one a standard user. This way, um, when you are doing your normal work, browsing the internet in particular, please use the standard account. That way, if you by chance download some sort of malware or virus, that virus account software does not have the permissions of an administrator and can do less damage to your computer. When you need to make some changes to your security settings or such, then you can log in as your administrator. But again, for your normal daily use, you should use a standard user account.